Welcome to Team Perry's Step Out of Line podcast, featuring co-hosts Perry and Lori Finkelstein. Together, they explore, meet, and share inspirational stories with guests who have made a positive impact in today's world. This podcast resonates with our hope to make this world a better place one step at a time through love, acceptance, and uplifting conversations. Wayne Rampetto, who is a sports broadcaster. He is with SNY. He's with WCBS. He's with Fox Sports. I think he does everything. Uh, we actually met you. Um, we were coming out of an elevator, and you were. we were at City Field. This is last year, and I think we screamed at you. We love Rain Delay Theater. And yeah, good. And caught off guard, and then um, you friended Perry, which was kind of awesome. So before we even discuss our favorite segment that you've ever done of the delay here, which we love, um, we wanted to find out more about you, how you got started. I know you grew up in Chicago. What was your baseball team growing up? Well, you know, being in Chicago, I was lucky to have uh, two teams, you know, with the Cubs and the White Sox here and, and having both leagues represented, just like in New York with the Mets and the Yankees. So got the full baseball landscape and you know funny thing about at the time when I was growing up you know the Cubs were on WGN nationwide and you know there were a couple other super stations including the Braves on TBS and the Mets on WOR they were still a super station at the time so I actually watched a lot of Mets games too as a kid with Ralph and, and Tim McCarver and uh, saw, saw a lot of those games growing up as well as watching the two teams in Chicago and some of the Braves games so you know, baseball was always on. It seemed like Cubs played a lot of day games still. You know, they didn't have lights at Wrigley Field and until 1988, so they played so many day games. Even after they got lights, you know, they only played 10 or 12 night games a year at the beginning. So, um, you know, there was, there was baseball on seemingly all day. So it was a, a good opportunity for a kid like me who loved the game to, uh, you know, watch it as much as I wanted to. Do you play it also as a kid? Were you like yeah, I played little league and played up into high school and all that. So yeah, I was pretty active with with learning the sport and with trying to do as much as I could uh, as far as being in, involved in the game and, and learning how to play it and and all that. You know, obviously not not good enough to make a, a charge after a career out of it, but you know, really was focused on the broadcasting side of it from a young age and you know, kind of had tunnel vision on on what I wanted to do and and have been fortunate enough to to have those opportunities to do it. But you also created opportunities. I was reading that you started interning at a radio station um, as, I guess, it was in college, and you, apparently you worked very hard doing that. And then I think in 2007 you went to a minor league uh, job fair, um, and you knew exactly where to get your, I guess it was your resume or a tape of you or whatever, so that you would get to the right person and you had a couple of different offers. So. Um, I don't think that you just lucked into it. I think you worked hard to get exactly where you knew you wanted to be because there are plenty of people, I'm sure, who wanted the same thing as you, and there are not that many people who are a success um, as you are. And um, so I think that's pretty awesome. It shows people that if you use your smarts and you work hard, you really can make something of yourself what you really want to do. So that tunnel vision probably was uh, a big benefit for you growing up. Um, so now you're with uh, the Mets, and you know we're big Mets fans. We adore the Mets, everything about them, even though I grew up a Yankee fan, but that's another story. <laughs> um, and um, we're curious. Corona times, we're Metless. We have no baseball. Very sad here in New York, all over. Um, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing to keep yourself busy? Yeah, I mean, it's tough, you know, finding uh, things to do every day, especially now as we get deeper into what should be the baseball season and the weather is getting better and, and all that. It's it's tough to uh, stay inside and, and focus on, you know, making sure everybody's healthy and, and really trying to just keep an eye on everything that's that's truly important right now going on around the country and around the world. So, uh, I mean, I'm reading books and I, I bought a uh, PlayStation so I could play MLB The Show and <laughs> uh, you know, it's the only game I have, so I'm just playing that when I get when I do it, and uh, you know, trying to just uh, stay active and, and enjoy time. Uh, you know, get to be around my daughter more, who's uh, six years old, so um, that's good. Normally, I wouldn't have as much time with her during the baseball season. So, 
uh, you know, just trying to find the, the good parts of the day and, uh, and, and keep, uh, keep on moving day in and day out until we hopefully get to get back to where we want to be, which is a uh, baseball field again. So what do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to be all in Florida, all Arizona? I mean, they're not going to start going all over the United States and traveling all over these guys. Yeah, I would think so, at least at first. I think ultimately they do want to end up back in their home cities and they, they do want to play, even if it's empty at City Field. I think they still want to have that semblance of, of being somewhat normal. You know, as far as the, the plans for Arizona or Arizona and Florida, I think they make sense, especially the Arizona and Florida plan. You know, you'd have teams in familiar settings at their spring training sites and all that. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know how feasible it is really to – have everyone in Arizona and and play through the heat all day and have a hundred plus degrees and have it you know if they have to be kind of secluded for as long as they would have to be. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think the players and owners though will figure it out. I, I think that if there is anything contentious as far as salaries or you know the amount of time they'd have to be away from their families or whatever, uh, that those things will get figured out. I, I think as long as as baseball says. And they get the green light from the CDC and from the, the government, you know, that it's okay to play. I think they'll figure out a way to, to do that. I don't think they'll get too hung up on those details at the end of the day. Yeah. Boy, do we miss it. And we miss, um, we miss hearing you. We miss Howie Rose. We miss, we miss the dream team at City Field, you know, Keith, Ron, and, and we just, um, you know, everything about it we miss. Now, what would you prefer? Do you, would you rather be behind camera or would you like being, do you like being on radio instead? Which is your, you know, I like, you know, radio is such a, a great medium because we get to paint the picture and, and tell the story of the game. And, um, you know, you have these uh, opportunities to really, you know, hone your craft as a, as a broadcaster. Uh, whereas TV, you know, I, I think Gary will be the first to tell you it's a totally different type of broadcast. It's probably an easier broadcast. You, you're just, you're just kind of captioning what's happening. Uh, you know, you're keeping conversations going and all that. It's, it's just a different animal compared to radio. Um, you know, I think uh, the true broadcasters prefer radio, um, but, you know, the TV is great too and a totally different challenge. And, you know, I really like being able to do both. You know, Gary doesn't miss many games, so I don't get to, to, to fill in for him too often, but it's, it's just a wonderful opportunity when I do. And, uh, you know, they'll have to do a lot more TV in the off season too with college basketball and all that. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad to do both and, and happy that I get to do both. Yeah, um, you picked um, you picked a great great team to work with, um, which of course is the Mets. Um, I was reading about Casey Stengel that he said there are three things you can do in a baseball game: you could win, you could lose, and it can rain. But when it rains, boy, do you guys have fun! Um, so much fun to watch. I think it's probably our favorite thing to do is you know watching the broadcasters kick back and have fun and just laugh. So rain delay theater. Um, so much fun. We really get to see all your personalities, and it just keeps the fans really laughing. I mean, the true Mets fans, you have to have a sense of humor, because otherwise you're just not going to make it. There's so many highs and so many lows, and, you know, every year we go through the same thing. So thank you for, for always entertaining us and keeping us laughing. We really appreciate it. Yeah, well, I appreciate you saying so, and I'm glad that uh, there's an audience for Rain Delay Theater. You know, we just kind of did it. Steve and I started it on just a whim, um, just because we were bored during the rain delay, just like we figured out a lot of the fans were. So, uh, you know, we hopped on Instagram and, 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 you know, did our thing and, uh, it turned into enough of a success for us to make a podcast out of it, which was a, a different format when we did the podcast version of it. Um, but we had a lot of fun interviewing all the, old Mets players and some of the broadcasters and some of the current players and, and getting to tell their stories a little bit more deeply than we normally would. And, you know, I'm sure, uh, we're, you know, we'll have more rain delay theaters ahead of us as, as the season gets started. But, you know, our, our goal with that was, uh, you know, just to make people laugh, like you said, and, and just, uh, just have a good time when, when normally during rain delays, there's a lot of griping and groaning and people that are miserable because, Everything's delayed, but, uh, you know, we tried to, to make it a fun time and, and I'm sure, uh, we'll do that again this year, but we appreciate you, uh, watching and being a part of that and, and appreciate everything that you do with your charitable work. And, you know, it's really great that, that you guys are, are making such a difference the way that you are. 
Oh, thank you. And the Mets have been so supportive of mm -hmm. us um, with tickets for games for us guys and for giving us raffle prizes. So it's um, they've really been wonderful, which only enhances our you know feelings of gratitude for for the Mets and, and the team and what they do. Um, who is your favorite Met player this year? And why? And why? Yeah. Just for this year, um, you know, I I, I I like to see what Pete Alonso is going to do for a second season. Um, you know, the rookie year was better maybe than any rookie year in, in baseball history, at least right up there with some of the all-time great ones. And, you know, he's carried himself in such a way uh, to, you know, be a, a young leader for this team when that's really uncommon in baseball. And it, it was a good thing that the Mets – uh, other players, you know, some of the veteran guys, a guy like Robinson Cano has been around a long time, you know, to give Pete the flexibility to really be himself in the locker room and to carry himself the way that he wanted to. And, you know, we saw Pete blossom immediately. And, you know, there, there's always that worry about a sophomore slump or whatever. And, uh, you know, it would be interesting to watch Pete make those adjustments and try to overcome, you know, the league having seen him for a whole year. So, uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how that plays out for him and if he can continue to, to hit home runs the way he did, or at least close to the way he did, and, you know, continue to, to become that leader because I think Mets fans want to wrap their arms around Pete and, and want to see him become that, you know, de facto captain of the team, that, that, that leadership that has been missing since David Wright hasn't been around. Right. David yeah. Wright, our all-time favorite, Matt, um, who we met, uh, we met once and he actually called Perry on the phone twice. So when we have his, his bat here, his jersey, so he, I mean, there's, there's only one David Wright, but I see what you're saying. I see, I see some of that in Alonzo and I, I see, uh, just kindred spirits, the same love for baseball and the team and, and humanity in both of them, which is amazing. Um, it's so been, it's been so great talking to you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it, um, and we can't wait to see baseball again, and we can't wait to listen to you and see you, and it'll be just uh, it'll be just back to normal hopefully soon. So yeah, thank, we hope you. So. thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you. So awesome. Keep following Team Perry. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.